What's up? It's the Game Bastard. Uh, I haven't made an update video in some time, and I apologize. I just keep picking up way too much crap, and uh, I just uh, I made one, and it ended up being like an hour long. So I'm gonna break that up into like a highlight video. But however, I, uh, I've been picking up a lot of imports lately, and uh, I've had a few for a while. But uh, I wanted to make some tutorials on actually how to play imports, uh, Japanese imports at least in America, because it's not as simple. Uh, as you think. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. You're going to have to spend a little bit of money uh, for the most part, but uh, they'll work. And um, so uh, I'm going to start out tonight with the uh, Famicom. So let's do a side by side comparison of the consoles. On the left here, we have the Nintendo Family Computer or the Famicom versus the um, American NES and the uh, American Top Loading NES. Um, First thing you'll know about, notice about the Famicom uh, is that the controllers are actually tethered to the system. Uh, Player 2 has a microphone built in. Uh, some games use this, like Legend of Zelda, for example. Um, something that we never actually uh, got to deal with over here in America. Um, there were several um, add-ons, I guess you want to say, accessories is a better word for it. Uh, like the zapper, the power glove... Um, the advantage, so on and so forth, uh, that came with the Nintendo. But in Japan, they also had a thing called the Disk System, which used um, games that look like uh, 3.5 floppy disks, and we'll get into those in a minute here. Uh, another thing, kind of it's the note that's interesting, is that when supposedly when Nintendo was designing the NES for American release, um, they decided that the Famicom looked too much like a toy, and they were worried that Americans weren't going to buy it. So they modeled the Nintendo after a VCR. So it looked like a piece of audio video equipment instead of a gaming system. Um, the problem with the front loader is that there's little contacts that are on the games that hit little pins inside the Nintendo and those get beat up. They get bent, they get uh, scratched or whatever happens. And uh, they need to get replaced so no amount of blowing in your cartridge or using cleaning stuff is going to solve that. You need to replace that 72 pin connector. Um, not nearly as much of an issue if an issue at all with the top loading systems. Uh, another thing to note is that there is a Japanese version of the top loader. It looks exactly like that. It plays Famicom games, but it's got RCA built it right in um, with stereo. So it's um, they're kind of sought after. Um, there's a couple other variants of this. I've seen squared buttons on these, and I guess there was a version of this that had RCA, but um, I only saw one picture of one, and I don't know if it was a mod or whatever but um, apparently they existed. So that's what I got for consoles. So let's do a little comparison of the Japanese Famicom uh, packaging and the carts versus the American. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you the uh, disc system and what those games look like. This is uh, the only disc Famicom disc system game that I own, which is Mooch and something or other. Um, if you pop this little plastic case open, you expose the disc and it looks a lot like a 3.5 floppy disk. And uh, I don't know much about these, if they improved the uh, graphics or sound or whatever, but because uh, I haven't actually played it, but I uh, just thought I'd show you guys that. Now, uh, most Famicom games looked like this. We have uh, horizontal artwork, um, smaller box, soft shell, although I do have a couple games that have hard shell and are vertical, uh, like this Namco and this... Uh, Koei game, uh, that's uh, Romancing of the Three Kingdoms there. Um, and uh, some of the um, Japanese releases um, mimic or mirror the American or vice versa, I suppose. Um, this is wizardry here. Now if you actually open up these games, you can see that in the Famicom release we have the small manual and there's our actual Famicom cartridge. And they always come in these, these clear plastic uh, cases there. This is the Americans, which I'm sure you've seen. Oops. Plenty of these before. The gray carts uh, came in the dust sleeves and big American manual. However, in Japan, some games were completely renamed um, when they were released in America. For instance, we have Dragon Quest 3 here. In America, this is Dragon Warrior 3. Now, I'm, I'm not completely sure of this, but as far as I know, um, in Japan, the game only came with the manual, where in America, the game came with, obviously there's a the game, there's your manual, 
But it also came with uh, a spell list and this big fold-out deal. It's got all the enemies and it's got a map in there and all that. I'm not going to take it all apart here for you. but um, So, I, I've, out of all the Famicom games I've come across, I still haven't come across a game that had the map or anything like that in there. So I don't know if that was an add-on. You had to buy the strategy guide or what the deal was. Um, so that's what I got for the carts. So let's get down to it. You want to play a Famicom game on an American system, right? Well, you grab your Famicom game and you stick her on in there and you're going to realize real quick that that's not going to work well. Um, the Famicom carts are physically different than the American carts. Not just on the outside, but on the inside. And I've taken the liberty of opening up a copy of uh, Mahjong here and a copy of Rad Racer to show you. That these have 60 little pins or little connectors here, or the um, this is the Famicom cart versus the American, which had 72. So you need to get some way to go from 60 pins to 72 pins. Uh, the other thing I want to note while I get this thing is open is look how much wasted space is in these things versus the Famicom cart. Now I've seen bigger chips on those, um, so it's, it makes sense that they would have uh, a cart that big, but uh, I don't get why they made these carts so humongous in America. Um, so what you need? Well, you need one of these little buggers. This is a uh, 72 to 60 pin adapter. Now, here's a little thing, and, and some of the um, older uh, black box games, pretty much any game that has the uh, game artwork or gameplay uh, art on the cover of the game or the box, um, during Christmas time, they had a problem with the American um, chipboards. So what they did was they took a bunch of uh, the uh, chips and they essentially put them onto um, Famicom chipboards and they made an adapter. I don't own one of these adapters but they exist and they're inside some of these games so um, you know you might have one sitting around that you don't even have, know that you have but you gotta rob it out of there. Otherwise I got this off a guy from Craigslist I'm sure you can get them on the internet um, I don't think you can actually get these things on eBay but um, this is what you're gonna need. So what you do Stick that little bugger right on in. Make sure she's nice and tight because last time I did this, um, you know, it didn't want to work for me. However, take your Famicom cart, stick it on there, turn it on, gray screen. Dun, dun, dun. Well, and I figured out, and this is, this rule applies to every Famicom game I've tried in here. You actually want to flip these things backwards. And you turn it on. Ta-da! Works just fine. Um, I love this song, by the way. It's a great game. This is Mother. This is actually the uh, first Earthbound game, which, uh, for some weird reason, it was never released in America. But now this is, this uh, series is immensely popular over here. So let's uh, let's take a peek at uh, actually using the uh, Famicom, though, to run Famicom games in America. So let's say you say, screw it. I'm not going to deal with all that BS with the adapters. I'm going to straight up buy a Famicom. And I'm going to use this to play my Famicom games. Cool! Except there's a couple things you're going to need to know, even about this, to run this in America. Um, first thing you do, it's pretty straightforward, you flip your little top, and I'm going to use Peach Boy Legend here, and you pop your card in, and you hit the power button. But before you do that, you need to know a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, and the most important, by far, the most important thing you need to know, and I should have unraveled this first. Uh, I'm not very good at preparation. Um, wah, you need one of these. This, if you can see, I'm going to try to get it in the light here, is a 9-volt DC adapter. You cannot... I repeat, you cannot use an AC adapter on the Japanese Famicom. You will fry it. I know. I've done it. Luckily for me, I just burned out a voltage regulator and replaced it pretty quickly. But uh, you could fry that whole system. So DC, and this applies for all Japanese systems, do not use an AC adapter. The other thing you need to know is that you can't use the Japanese um, RF adapter. You have to use the American RF adapter. And... 
The other thing is that the frequencies of the channels in Japan is different than they are in America, so you might have to tune your TV into, say, channel 96, like me. Unfortunately, my DVD recorder doesn't go up that high, so I can't physically show you. You're just going to have to believe me. Um, I've heard all sorts of different numbers, so you really just got to sit and go through all of them until it shows up on your system. Um, so there you are. There's your Famicom.